Hey, I'm Scott. I'm Rem. And we are the hosts of Geek Nights, the late night podcast for geeks. And coming up in just a few weeks, we're going to be making an appearance at PAX East 2012. Now, we've been going to conventions for a long time, about a decade, and, you know, six PAXs or whatever. So I think we've kind of figured out all the hints, tricks, and secret ways to survive a convention. And PAX is kind of an extraordinary convention, so hopefully we can boil this down to something very simple. All right, so for all those of you who maybe have never been to PAX before, or maybe never went to a convention before, we're, here is our PAX East 2012 Survival Guide. All right, the first thing you absolutely cannot mess up at PAX is the three, three must-see events. These are pretty much the cornerstones of the convention. Like, these are the reasons to be here. These kick everything off, these knock it down. These are the overwhelming things that made us come back from our first PAX and go, holy shit. Right, now the first must-see event is at the very beginning of the convention, there is a keynote address. This year's keynote speaker for PAX East 2012 is Jane McGonigal, the author of Reality is Broken. And I'm sure she's gonna have a lot of interesting stuff to say about how games can change the world for the better. Every PAX keynote has been amazing. I've seen people driven to tears by them. They're just, they kick off the whole event, the energy level, the whole con should be there. Do whatever it takes to get in line for this. So what my, my specific advice is, about three hours before the event on Friday, go check out the line. Just walk by, see what's going on, see if there's a big crowd or not. If there's not much of a crowd, go get some breakfast, come back. If there's a huge line and people are filling it up, just get in that line. And don't worry about waiting in the line. It's not so bad. The line is indoors and everyone's playing games all over the floor or doing other things to occupy themselves. Unlike it's not like waiting in line for concerts. Most tickets. other conventions you might have been to, there are not so many smelly people. No, not that many. <laughs> Now, immediately following the keynote, keep your butt in the seat, because in that same room, we be hustling. It's time for Q&A number one, the second must-see event of every pack. The keynote kind of kicks it off, and everything gets started, and then there's a pause, and immediately afterward, they play the hustling song, Gabe and Tycho walk out, and they are rock stars. Legit. <laughs> Yeah, at least at PAX. Yes, right. <laughs> and it, this is our moment as geeks and nerds and gamers. And basically, you might think, oh, it's a Q&A. Maybe I'm not that much of a Penny Arcade fan. The Q&A is not like Q&As you're used to. Basically, everyone, they have microphones all over the place, and people just walk up, they get a microphone, they say whatever they want. And Gabe and Tycho say whatever they want back. People pull crazy crap. I believe one year we pulled an Action Castle stunt. Well, we was very try, popular. Well, we try to do something funny each time. It's getting hard. We're running out of ideas, I think. Yeah. But anyway, Q&A 1 is absolutely do not miss it. Now, the third must-see event is actually at the very end of the convention, the closing ceremonies, which is the final round of the Omegathon. Because remember, they don't announce what the Omegathon is until the very end. Everyone finds out simultaneously. It is like the best-kept secret in all of PAX. And the real reason you want to go to this is that you've all seen The Wizard. Remember that tournament? How crazy that was? How you wanted nothing more than to be at an event like that? And then that? open the curtain, and holy shit, it's Mario 3? Well, that's exactly what you get at the very end of the the packs. They open the curtain and holy shit, it's the secret game that they didn't reveal. Okay, Nintendo Family Computer TM. Okay. Oh, versus Excite Bike. Until just that. Pretty much the keynote opens and the closing ceremonies close and you have to go to these events. No matter how long it takes, just line up on Sunday, just hang out with people. We're usually just playing games in line, just straight up board games. Now, when you look at that pack schedule, there's got a lot of panels on there, a lot of panels. And you do not have time to go to all of them, especially since a lot of the ones you might want to go to overlap. So I would personally suggest you go to our panels and screw the rest. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, what you want to do is look at that schedule and pick out just a few, maybe less than five, five or fewer panels that you really want to go to. They are your top priority and make sure you see them. Get in line in far enough in advance if there is a line necessary. They did say they're going to be much bigger panel rooms this time. They may not fill up. There's also one additional panel room. Yeah. So who knows what to make of that, but it is possible that incredibly popular panels with famous people or hot new games are going to fill up. So make sure if you really want to see it, you get in line early enough, go check out the room, see what's going on. And after you see those few panels you really care about, 
That's it, you know? Otherwise, you're gonna spend your whole convention waiting in line and going to panels, waiting in line, and you're gonna go crazy. Of course, at the same time, if at any point you're bored, there's nothing going on. I don't know how that could happen. Just look at the schedule right then. There's probably a panel going on that you might enjoy. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're in a panel, and it's not great, like you expected it to be awesome and it's just a guy mumbling, walk out. Don't even feel bad about it. Don't yeah, waste PAX your is, PAX minutes. PAX is only three days. You have limited time of gaming awesomeness. Do not sacrifice even a second of your awesome PAX right, to sit in a panel that you are not having fun if with. If you come to our panel and you figure out that it's all a scam and we're totally lame, walk out. Walk the hell out. So you might not realize this, but if you want PAX merch, not Penny Arcade merch, but PAX merch, you need to get that shit on Friday, immediately after the Q&A. This stupid scarf sold out so fast at the last PAX East, you wouldn't even believe it. People were buying the rejects. Yeah, I mean, you know, Penny Arcade merch, you can buy from the Penny Arcade store anytime. They sell that to you gladly. But if you want the PAX with a number shirt, it's gonna be sold out maybe by Friday night. Yeah, if anything has a PAX logo on it, it is sold exclusively at that PAX, and it sells out at that packs never to be sold again and you might regret later not buying it when you had the chance so be sure to go and get one if you want one before they sell out so now the most obvious thing on the pack schedule that you probably don't want to miss are the Friday night concerts and the Saturday night these concerts. are some crazy concerts if you've never been to a PAX or never been to a convention like this they are not what you'd expect from a convention. These are full-on, real-deal concerts, and you want to go to both of them without exception. Right. Now, maybe you've been to PAX before, and you've been to the concerts already. In that case, you know what to expect, because they're mostly the same thing every time. Paul and Storm are going to sing the same semen song they always sing. Yeah, I mean, you know, so if you already know what it is, and it's not your favorite thing in the world, you might have your time better spent playing games or seeing some panel, right? Yeah, Last but Pax Prime, we skip both concerts to hang out in tabletop all night. All right. But if you've never seen these concerts before, or if they are your favorite bands and favorite groups in the world and you live and die for them, do not miss the Friday night and Saturday night concerts. They are to behold. And we cannot stress this enough. If you have never been to a PAX before, these concerts are pretty much your guaranteed 100% programming. Mm-hmm. So every con you go to has like a dealer's room or an artist alley or an expo hall, but the Penny Arcade one is kind of the successor to E3. It is a spectacle. It is freaking enormous and posh. Yeah, and the thing is a lot of people try to go in there and they spend most of their PAX time in the Expo. I mean, you could wait three hours to play Duke Nukem Forever, or you can game for three hours. Yeah, you know, I think the thing to do with the Expo Hall is to find a time, see everything, walk down every aisle, look at every booth, right? And if there's a, an indie game or something else interesting you want to play, then play it. But I don't really think it's worthwhile to wait in line for multiple hours to play a game that is not yet released. Right? The main reason for that is you look, out, there are PAXs we've been at where people waited in the line to play like Fallout 3, but now you can just get Fallout 3 and play your brains out. Yeah, right? the line for that Civ 5 demo was like three hours. But I now we Civ have 5. Civ 5, right? It's not that much later. Uh, so you have very few precious PAX minutes. Don't waste them waiting to play a game just because it's not out yet, right? Also, don't be tricked by swag. Most of the swag they're giving out is actually not that cool and you really won't care about it a year from now. Yeah, is this going to be useless junk that you think is cool right then and there and then you're going to bring it home and throw it out and it's all just advertising? Except that Fallout puppet. Yeah, the worst part is that you have to carry the swag around with you and that's really not fun when you're going to be walking all Especially day. Especially at the new venue where most of your hotels are nowhere near the convention. Yeah. So we told you the absolute must-see events at PAX, but there are a few maybe-see events at PAX. Like, if the other ones are the tens, these are the nines. Right, so, you know, there was Q&A number one. Now, of course, that means there's at least going to be Q&A number two, right? <laughs> Q&A number two is pretty much you didn't get enough Mike and Jerry at Q&A number one, or maybe you showed up into town so late on Friday you missed Q&A number one. If either of those is true, make sure you see Q&A number two. Yep. Also, there is the Make a Strip panel, which is literally Gabe sitting there drawing Penny Arcade on demand. Right. That's really good if you're a huge fan of Penny Arcade, or if you really want some laughs, or if you really didn't get enough of Mike and Jerry. Or you want to see a man who has the superpower of being able to draw perfect lines without it just bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Uh, always lots of crazy hijinks happen at the Mega Strip. Hot um, dog fairies. Hot dog fairies, dick wolves, you know how it goes. So PAX is actually, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, a gaming con. Yet many people forget to play games. I don't know how you could forget to play games. The most majority of the square footage space of PAX 
is open gaming. And especially this PAX East in the new venue has bigger tabletop than any PAX has ever had. Alright, so there's tabletop gaming, this console gaming, and this PC gaming, right? But I would personally suggest that you go to the tabletop gaming whenever you have Definitely. a spare minute, right? Now, you might think, oh, you're just tabletop nerds, but really, you know, console and PC gaming, you can sort of get on the internet and around, you know? It's a lot harder and a lot more rare to be able to get some strange tabletop games and enough nerds actually willing to play it and play it seriously at the same place at the same time. Do not miss that opportunity at PAX. Tabletop is also where a lot of the weird stuff happens, the indie RPGs, the crazy rare Dune board game. Right, so if at any moment at PAX you don't know what to do and none of the panels look interesting, tabletop you go. Now this is sort of obvious to anyone who's been to any convention, but you don't want to lose your badge. Your badge is extremely important. If you lose it, you will be booted out, right? They Especially don't... PAX sells out, like guaranteed. PAX sells out crazily. You don't want to lose your badge. You don't have to go to a scalper. Yeah, don't if... rely on the convention to give you a new badge. Yeah, if you had your badge mailed to you, as most of you did, don't forget to bring it with you to PAX. A lot of people leave their badges at home and go, oh no, oh no, right? <laughs> The second thing about the badge is very important is the back of the badge. On the back of the badge, you're gonna see the show hours, but in addition to that, you're also gonna see the rules of PAX. Now you might go to other conventions and like anime cons and you see the million rules they've got. No punching, no kicking, no eating, no drinking, no running, no yelling. PAX is a very different culture and the rules of PAX very much explain almost every reason that I love it so right. much. So above all else, follow these seven rules of PAX. Drugs are bad. Don't steal. Don't punch or kick people. Don't cheat. Well, no cheating. Don't harass anyone. Don't spray paint or put stickers on stuff and don't mess with things that aren't yours. That pretty much covers everything you need to run a functioning society. Yeah, if you follow those seven rules, I guarantee your PAX East experience will be the win. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for our PAX East 2012 survival guide. Yep, I mean, we're pretty much veterans of conventions. A decade worth of doing lectures and panels at everything from OhioCon to Otakon, Anime Boston, many, many PAXs. And straight away, PAX is, between you and me, my favorite convention in the world. I look forward to it every year. It is so pretty much the six best. six months. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, if you're, you know, if you're interested in checking out more of our stuff, right, you can obviously go check out our podcast at FrontRowCrew.com. Yeah. If you want to see us at PAX East in a few weeks, uh, what you're going to want to do is go to our three panels. On Friday, we're going to be doing a panel called The Triple Threat. It's actually three panels in one. Short subjects in gaming. We're doing three 20-minute panels, just bam, bam, bam in the room. Right. On Sunday, we're doing two more panels, Game Mechanics and Mechanism Design. A favorite from PAX Prime. That packed the room. That's probably our best panel yep. to date. And a brand new panel, How to Win at Games. You play to win the game. We literally teach you how to win at games. <laughs> which is, is anyway. And on Saturday, you know, we don't have any panels. What are we going to be doing? Hanging out on tabletop pretty much all day. Yeah, our advice, you know, we are doing what we say. It is not a situation of uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. You're going to be seeing us follow all of our tips. And if you follow them too, you're going to have an awesome time. So hopefully we'll see you there. Hello.